Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you just how and why did you get started in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Uh, I began to train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, to be honest with you, because of surfing. You talk about surfing now. <laughs> I used to surf since I was 10 in, uh, in Barra da Tijuca. Barra da Tijuca is a neighborhood from Brazil, uh, in, in Rio de Janeiro. And then by surfing, I get to know a lot of people, you know, we used to have like a, a, a group there. And uh, a lot of people from that group were training Jiu-Jitsu. And, and uh, actually some of my neighbors were the Gracies, mm -hmm. Hanzo, High, and Half Gracie. Mm -hmm. And besides them, there was a bunch of other guys that all of them like evolved in Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so it was kind of like a natural thing to me. I used to do Judo before Jiu-Jitsu, so uh, I was a Judoka before that. I was like a back then. I was when I when I started doing jiu jitsu. Was a yellow belt in judo, the third belt in judo by on my time, and uh, it was a natural transition for me. And uh, I begin to train first. Uh, I begin to do my first techniques with uh, with a Tatula Jordan, which his nickname is Fito, because a good friend of ours for a long time, good friends with the Gracies too. And then after I begin to be like a little serious, more serious about it, when I saw there was something that I need to really stick on, I, I, I moved to uh, uh, full-time to the Gracie Academy. Back then it wasn't even called Gracie Baja, the name was Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, back then the main professors were the Machado brothers. It wasn't even uh, Master Carlos. Master Carlos was the owner of the school, but he used to go, I remember, kind of like twice a month. He was living in the, in the mountains in Terrasopolis back then. And this was back in 86, 1986, when I began to train kind of more serious in jiu-jitsu. So it was, you know, pretty much because of natural reasons, because of surfing, getting your buddies there, everybody training, so that's why, you know. So then when you kind of make a transition from surfing because of your relationship with your friends and mm -hmm. you got more serious yes. uh, with it, and what what do you think, um, what was it about it that kind of made you get serious about it and why did you stick with it? Why do you think you kept doing it? Well. There's something about jiu-jitsu, man. <laughs> I still try to figure that out, you know. Uh, it sticks to you. I mean, when you get, like, in a certain level of commitment, you don't need to be a ninja or a monk to be, like, totally committed. But when you get at a certain level of commitment, it just, just a click happens and you're hooked, you know. And it, it wasn't different with me. I, uh, I, I got hooked. And I, I begin to have, like, a little bit of more understanding. And... Uh, I believe it's not just the techniques in, in, in the environment, the camaraderie that you have in a jiu-jitsu school, but I think well, I, I, it got me hooked because it gave me a level of confidence that I didn't realize back then, but now thinking back, I was like, I was feeling so good, so good confidence, not arrogance, don't get me wrong, not, 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 it was just a confidence in every aspect of my life. I, I, I felt confident to go for a very hard test at school. I felt confident to talk to somebody, for example, in, in a higher level as me in a certain area that I could talk in the same level without fear, mm -hmm. without being ashamed, or without... Be it gave me that kind of confidence. It gave me that kind of confidence to be who I was. I wasn't getting stuck to any, like, uh, uh, fashion uh, uh, thing or any any certain level of behavior, I was just being myself, you know, and, that, and that's probably why people got hooked on, you know, and I think the confidence comes at the end of the day because you know that you can protect yourself and you know that you can, you know, be successful in a confrontation in all kinds of levels, verbal, or physical, and you can be successful because you have the weapons too, and that gives you like peace of mind, that's why I think everybody gets hooked on, on jiu-jitsu. Yeah. That's my theory, at least. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's a great uh, explanation. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that was one of the next questions was about the benefits. And clearly that's the, one of the best benefits. Yeah, yeah, the oh, benefits yeah definitely. The internal. I don't think only jiu-jitsu, you know, like other, other styles of martial arts, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you got to a certain level, I think that's what happens yeah. to your personality, you know. Well, let me ask you this, then. Knowing mm -hmm. that there, and I, I, I think I just hit, I mean, I've always loved jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But, but um, recently, I think I've hit that. Where it's, I mean, I know I'm in it forever, you know. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. I'm an old man, but, I, but I'm, yeah, I'm in yeah. it forever. You're not an old man, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> We're just experienced. <laughs> yeah, right. But what, um, if, you, if you're talking to some, some guys that are uh, maybe uh, first strike white belts, uh -huh. and, uh, and they're loving it, they're enjoying it, but there's times when they don't feel like training. 
how do you, what can you say to them to kind of encourage them? What, how can they motivate themselves to get to that point to where they don't have to motivate themselves so much so it's take yeah. over? No, definitely. I mean, uh, that's actually something that I talk every single week. I talk to my students in the fundamentals class. Uh, and not just in Jiu Jitsu, I know martial arts, like the time that people quit more is on that little beginning. On the very beginning, you are excited, and then with the time, you begin not to evolve as much as you did in the beginning. So people tend to uh, to let laziness, laziness take care of themselves, and then they just, uh, you know. Well, what I, I need to tell people is that every human being, we're not different than anybody, okay? We, black belts and martial arts for life, we're no different than anybody. There were times we didn't feel like training. Mm -hmm. There were times that I feel like just staying home and watching soap opera, mm -hmm. you know, that happened to me and happens to everybody, and it's a normal thing. However, one thing I ask to anybody, and you, you correct me if I'm mistaken, if you feel like that, but if you have discipline enough to say, no, I'll go. You know, I'll go because I know it's good for me. After the class that you came, you're going to be a better person. You're feeling, you're feeling. And you're going to feel way better. Yeah. And you're going to say, you know what, thank God I kind of pushed myself to go and, uh, and I'm glad. Yeah. You know, guys, it's no different for me. I mean, sometimes I teach class all day long for kids and all that. And I'm really tired. I mean, sometimes I wake up in the morning, it's the story of my life. I competed all my life and I was sore, I'm tired. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'll go. And I'll go and sometimes it's the best training sessions I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I was just going just to go, just to push myself. And that's when evolution comes, you know. So you, you just think that it's a normal uh, state of mind. Don't think that every single day you you got to be motivated and super excited to go because guess what? If sometimes anything in life, you're not going to be extra motivated to go. Let's say that, you know, you're going to sign a contract to go every single day to the movies. And you have to do this for six months. And you love movies. It's like, man, that's awesome. Every single day I'm going to go to the movies. Six months. That's unbelievable. I bet my life that one day you're going to wake up and say, you know what, man, I don't feel like going to the movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything in life is that. It's, it's like a normal thing. You, you just have to go with the flow and think about the benefit. You know, because guess what? After you do the class, you're going to be a better person. You're going to feel better. Great. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, that's for our students. Now, I have a few other questions. I'm not lying. That's you true. Want to stop that's true. Yeah. No, you know, I want you to keep rolling, but we'll do this will be a little different shift, a little shift in emphasis. Mm -hmm. um, one, one thing I want to ask you about uh, is your opinion on a couple of things. One okay. thing, I don't know if con controversy is the right word, but there seems to be some friction, mm -hmm. maybe is a better word, in the community um, about emphasis in training or in, in uh, schools on sport jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. or um, self-defense. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, oh, definitely, there's, there's yeah, definitely. And, and, and this has been on for a while. Yeah. A long while. <laughs> so in, in that, wading into that for you, and your, how, do you, how would you express seeing how you see that as a bit of a controversy and how you maybe either, either emphasize one or the other or keep a balance? What do you see as a, the appropriate way to look at that. You said it right. It has to be a balance, okay? Uh, well, I really don't believe, if you ask me, on the extremes of both sides. I don't believe in any of them, okay? Let's, let's go for the first topic, self-defense. We know that self-defense is the reason that jiu-jitsu was made, and that's the core, the, 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 the soul of jiu-jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu is the art that makes the weak beat the strong, right, through technique. So it's all based on a real confrontation, and it's all based on technique and leverage, based on a real fight. I get that, and that's on me, and that should be on inside every Jiu-Jitsu professor, okay? Yes. However, everything evolves, okay? Even for you to be proficient in the self-defense part, you need to have a better understanding of what's going on on the sports side too, you know? Otherwise, you're going to be outdated. You're going to begin to fade away because you're going to get stuck and you're going to be stubborn enough not to evolve. And then guess what? Time goes by, 
and then you're going to be left behind. So you have to maintain that soul and that core of jiu-jitsu, but you have to keep your mind open as every good martial artist to evolve because the art evolves. A lot of things that you see in sports are not really practical to, to a self-defense situation, but guess what? There's adaptions to be made. And if you understand and if you learn, if you open your mind to learn those, those kind of stuff, you can actually translate to, 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 to a real situation too. And that's the other way now, the other spectrum. Some people simply neglect totally the self-defense aspect. They have a lot of world champions, they have a lot of success in competition, but they don't have the minimal knowledge of self-defense. They don't even know how to escape from a headlock. They don't know even how to escape from a mouth position correctly in a real situation. And that's, it's completely unacceptable. Okay, if I am a jiu-jitsu professor and I make a bunch of world champions that don't know the minimal knowledge of the program of the self-defense, I fail. It's not their fault, it's my fault because I didn't do my job correctly. So, not just me, but in Gracie Baja, we always had the, the, the balance. I just taught the class right now, mm -hmm. and everybody else, even the brown belts, close to the black belts, that are competitors, I mean, in my life, I was blessed to do a lot of world champs. I have a lot of world champions under me. I don't even know how many, I'm a lot, I have a lot. Okay. And uh, I, all of them, and I never neglect that side. I'm gonna begin the class, everybody, not just the white belts, self-defense, let's do the self-defense, you know? And uh, and uh, all of this, and sometimes also I test them. I say, hey, how about that skate from that kind of headlock on that situation? How do you do it? And there's always a little correction to be made. You know, that, that's a good thing. Even for me, you know, when I'm with, with, with my professors, with my master, Master Carlos Gracie Jr., with such a level of, and knowledge that he has, I always get corrections on the basic stuff, you know. So the idea is uh, balance, you know. You should never get away from your roots. You should never get away from what jiu-jitsu uh, is made of. And you should always keep your mind uh, open to evolve. And I think that discussion is between the two extremes, I believe. You know, because like some people, you know, they tend also to push to one side and the other. And nowadays what I see is that, you're right, is most people right here or most people right there. You know, and I try to be kind of like... Trying to do what so I do need you, to do. In every class, do you work a, a self-defense technique, or you just pepper it in as you as you see a need to balance? <laughs> in in the fundamentals, every single in the class. Every class. In the but fundamentals, in, every this, single in this class. class, which was somewhat. In that all levels class, and oh, okay. in some advanced uh, advanced class, I do twice a week. Oh, okay. So the first move, mm -hmm. it's either a takedown or a self-defense move. Right. You know, we have to begin yeah. to be jujitsu and, and fight begins standing up, and yeah. not just ground. You know. Right. So. Very good, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, we had. I also put out to some of our network some que ask questions if they had questions. A couple I already covered, but mm -hmm. one one uh, fellow who's also with the uh, organization. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, his father is the v v vice president, I think, of Chuck Norris's organization. Oh, good. And he just got his purple belt recently in BJJ, awesome. so he's really, you know, excited mm -hmm. about it. And he had he had, he had sent a question. He wanted to ask you, uh, just briefly, I guess, overview yeah. of in, in terms of. What are some of the things that, at certain levels, say blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, mm -hmm. what are some of the things they might be, should be focusing on? Mm -hmm. Just an overview. Uh, and that's, that's big a big question. That's a really tough question. Uh, because people are different, people evolve in different ways. Uh, we have blue belts here that, that do to go toe to toe to black belts. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just gifted. You know, they train all the time, they're just gifted, and that happens. But if I need to summarize, uh, uh, Belt by belt, you know, let's begin from, you said he beginning from the blue, that's, that's what he said. That was his question. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think on the blue belt, the blue belt is that when you begin to experiment and you begin to, you begin to have an introduction of the overall spectrum of jiu-jitsu, you know. I think that's a belt that you, should, you really should uh, risk yourself a lot, you know, to, to, to find your identity. You're not going to find your identity until later, but you're going to begin to experiment a lot of things and uh, in order to begin to find your identity. You know, uh, the blue belt is the belt that I see more discrepancy. You have like mm -hmm. blue belts that I just said that go toe to toe with black belts and you have like blue belts that are really green. Yeah. You know, so, and then you see competition with the blue belts, you see like sometimes like a huge disparity. Mm -hmm. So the blue belt is a belt that, you know, the one that you take longer, 
is that the one about discovery. You discover a lot of things. I think the white belt is when you are introduced to stuff, mm -hmm. but you really don't know them yet. You know, right. on the blue belt, you begin to find your identity, you begin to get like a little bit of more understanding mm -hmm. about that kind of stuff. And I think on the purple belt is that when you really know who you are, and in the purple belt, you notice that all the purple belts, they are really good on one certain thing. Mm -hmm. That's when they be really begin there to find their identity. It's okay, man, guard right, my thing. And they, they overdo the guard, and then other sides begin to be a little neglected. Right. You know what I mean? So, so I think on the blue, on the purple belts, when you find your identity. You know, uh, I see purple belts that do things so well that nobody can stop. But at the same time, they get away a little bit from that thing, yeah. and they fade away, you know. Can I ask him to come in real quick? Does it, I know that. Yeah. Hey, James. Yeah. James, you guys want to come in for the last couple of questions? No, I'm going to keep you all day, sir. I appreciate uh, you. No, come on in. 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 These are my other boys. Where's Aaron? Yeah, um, there's Aaron's rolling. Uh, Where's Israel? Israel, yeah, come yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Is he? He's getting water. Right? Okay. All right, so I want to interrupt. You're on purple belt. Ah, uh, purple belt. Let them listen. Come on in, brother. Where's the other one? He's rolling. Is he rolling? Oh, he's rolling. That's fine. Rolling's always, rolling always good. good. Yeah, you learn a lot there too. <laughs> so you know, on the purple belt, you find your identity. You know, uh, you begin to do things. I do things nowadays, and uh, for example, spider guard. Spider guard is like a kind of guard that I was one of the first ones to do it. I, I wasn't. I was not the creator. The first guy that I saw doing that was Hansel Gracie. And I just stick to it and I create a couple of new things that I, I was maybe one of the first ones to do a lot in competition. So that's what I'm known for. But I still do it, you know. And, and, and the, on the purple belt, it was really hard to stop me on that. Yeah. And I would pull everybody to God. I would sweep everybody. I would triangle everybody. It was, you know, and people were not trying to figure out what was going on, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, if I was put out of this element, I was in trouble. Right. You know, so so the purple belt is kind of like it's kind of like that. You know, when you find your identity, you go like, gosh, you know, now I have to, you know, there's other weakness on my game. Mm -hmm. Brown belt, brown belt. It's really when you begin to figure out that you have a lot to learn and you have to begin to correct those things. So I remember that I was doing so much the spider guard stuff. I was successful, but at the same time, when I was out of my game, I was doing bad. So what, do I, what, what happened to me on the, on, the, on the brown belt? I was like, man, there's some people that I'm pulling to guard, and I can't sweep them because they figure out my game already. So I need to, to do something about it. And then I begin to train a lot of stand-up. I begin to be better on my takedowns. Mm -hmm. So I was beginning to get better on my takedowns. And my top game because of that was getting more solid. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. So... I was beginning to be a more complete fighter, a more complete practitioner with that. But it's still, I knew my flawless, I was getting better on it, but, uh, but uh, I still felt there was like something missing that I couldn't tell why. I mean, I was doing good in competition. I was doing really good decent training against black belts, but there was still something missing there. And then comes a the black belt. You know, the black belt is the new beginning. The black belt is not know this technique, don't, those technique. It's to understand why on the technique. Mm. What, what is behind that technique? Not just the technique itself. Mm. Why? What is behind it? And that's when the black belt gave me that knowledge. Mm. You know, and that knowledge comes not just for training, but for teaching. Yeah. I think teaching is one of the things that really give you deeper knowledge. You know? So, like I said, it's hard to say, but what I think, it's like summarizing everything, I, 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 I would say that. It's kind of hard to put just one word in each one of them, you know. But. Oh, that was excellent. That was a great answer. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, for the uh, MMA fans out here, I'm going to ask you, what is, what is Drax's take on the Silva loss? Man. i got to be honest. I'm yeah. Nobody's going to hear yeah, this. Yeah. No, no, no. That, 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 that's, that's the topic of the week, man. <laughs> All over the world. Well, uh, first of all, I know uh, Anderson personally. He's not a friend of mine or anything, but way back when he wasn't famous, you know, uh, we were always on the national circuit of fights and Mecca Valetudo and Storm Samurai and, and Heat FC. Like some of them I actually competed and fought on the, those and Anderson too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know he's a really hard-working guy and he came from really, really 
like tough upbringing and he made it man he's a winner in yeah. life and uh, the ability that the guy has is unhuman he's he's kind of like a video game guy if you ask me he's yeah. unbelievable you know uh, and it's 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 a little tough because everybody's pointing a finger on him and everybody's like excruciating him from what he did mm -hmm. my take on that is that he was really successful in doing the same thing before and because he wanted it, oh, he's a genius, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, like, he puts his hand out against Forrest Griffin. He was kind of pretty much doing the same thing, you know. However, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be critical too because he overdid it. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was beginning to fight his space on the fight. I was seeing that Weidman was beginning to get frustrated and there was fighting his distance. He was finding his angles. I, I, I could see, and then he overdid it. Mm. He just he just uh, crossed the line. You know, he was either too confident, or he was uh, either uh, I don't I really don't know because I'm not in his mind. I'm not right. I'm not his coach, but I think he overdid it. He he lost concentration a little bit, not a little bit, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then happen what happened yeah. you know so uh, at the same time it's one of those things like to point the finger on him right now on a moment like that and remember all the genius uh, performers that he did it's, it's kind of tough you know it, it's a hard call to make but uh, I think he finds a little bit of the balance right there if, if he gets a little more you know, a little more focused and uh, and uh, doing his genesis still, but a little more focused, I think he's still going to be unstoppable, you know. Okay. I'm not saying Weidman is a beast, don't get me wrong. Weidman is really, really good. And if you ask me who I was rooting for, I'm not going to lie, I was leaning a little bit more towards Weidman because Weidman trains with Hansel Gracie, which is like oh, the same, yeah, right. the same, the right. same uh, team yeah. that I have, you know, like mm -hmm. Frankie Edgar, mm -hmm. all those guys, Frankie Edgar, like training him before my, my last fight in Strike Force, and I helped him a little bit on his, on his fights too against BJ, mm -hmm. and uh, I trained together. So those guys are like our teammates in, yeah. in a way, you know, even though I love Anderson, he's a great guy, and he's a Brazilian. I mean, it wasn't like dying. About uh, why? You know, December twenty eighth, the rematch is on, and uh, you know it's going to be probably one of the biggest pay per view pay per views history. You know, yeah. just one thing that I want to make clear that all these conspiracy theories yeah. that he threw the fight to get money. Yeah. Come on, guys, give me a break. Yeah, you know, you guys, they, they they don't understand the amount of money and prestige and legacy that is involved in a fight like that. Mm -hmm. You know, Anderson Silva doesn't need to throw any fights. Right. You know, he, he his legacy, his bank account, he, he doesn't need to do that. You know, he lost because he lost. And Weidman was the best man, yeah. period. That's it. They're going to fight again. End of story. Yeah. You know. Well, that, we thank you for the interview. The last thing is, uh, we don't need a videotape.